Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Please allow me a point of personal pastoral privilege and thank many of you who have shown your support and love for our Shipman family on February 11th in Salisbury, North Carolina, the grand opening of the F. George Shipman Science Center at Livingstone College. To God be the glory. Thank you for your support. Continue to keep us in your prayers as we move forward with an endowment scholarship to be a blessing to future Livingstonians. God bless. Let us bow our heads together. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you once more for an opportunity to declare your word. Speak, Lord, your servant heareth the meditations of this heart and the words that come from this mouth. Let them be found pleasing and acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, you are our collective strength and our redeemer. In the name of Jesus the Christ, Yahshua the Messiah, we do pray with gratitude. And everyone said together, Amen. Scripture lesson this morning is Psalm 119. Very familiar words from the 133rd verse. Order my steps in thy word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Verse 134. Deliver me from the oppression of man, so will I keep thy precepts. One particular line out of the Black National Anthem. Lest our feet stray from the places, our God, where we met thee. For a few moments on this Heritage Sunday, this last Sunday in February, walk with me through free from worry, full of faith. The remix. Free of worry and full of faith. Those words are exactly what we need to hear again today, especially while war is raging in Ukraine, even as we celebrate Katanji Brown Jackson's nomination to become the first black woman Supreme Court Justice. And especially since this is Heritage Sunday in Greenville Memorial 2022. I also believe these six words, again, remix, free of worry and full of faith, summarize the message and the intent of James Weldon Johnson when he wrote the powerful words of lift every voice and sing. Our focus today is on verse 133 of the longest chapter in the Bible, Psalm 119. But when I read verse 134 of the following verse, I could see the vision of the Honorable Marcus Josiah Garvey at work. The psalmist declares, deliver me from the oppression of man. Sounds like Putin right now. That's literally free of worry. Deliver me. Marcus Garvey says, up, you mighty race, accomplish what you will. That's full of faith. Dr. Jerome Ross, one of my favorite professors when I was a student at Virginia Union Seminary, taught us, now remember this, he taught us that everything written from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22, cover to cover, cover to cover, everything in that Word of God was written under one of six different kinds of oppression. Let me say that again. This whole book. The Word of God, the Bible, the Holy Biblios, it has been written under six different times of oppression. Egyptian oppression, Assyrian, Babylonian, 
Persia, Greek, and Roman oppression. Sounds like what we're living in today. Psalm 137 and Psalm 119 were both written under Babylonian oppression. So yes, we need to celebrate all men and all women who challenge and step up to oppression, who challenge autocrats like Putin right now. 27 different armed conflicts going on in the world, on this planet, as I preach right now. Thank God for those who stand up to the bullies in this world. So we celebrate those men and women who challenge oppression, period, be it biblically, pre or post slavery conditions, even the overt tactics of racism and voter suppression still alive in American society today? Yes, these individuals work to remove mountains of cultural ignorance and low self-esteem because they were, guess what, free of worry and still full of faith. Of course, we have to celebrate the icons, Dr. Martin Luther King, El Hajjalin El Shabazz, Malcolm X, lest we forget Reverend Frederick Douglass, Sojourner Truth, Harriet Tubman, Fannie Lou Hamer, Marcus Garvey, Ida Barnett Wells, Mary Terrell, and Carolee Franklin Cook, co-founders of the National Association of Colored Women, Josephine Ruffin, Rosa Parks, and Ella Baker, just to name a few. Each of their stories are inspiring, for they have inspired me to attempt to inspire you to not only study this word, but to also study us as a people, to study our origins, to study our heritage, so that we will become proud of our African history and culture especially the history that existed before slavery. Garvey said, a people without knowledge of their history, origin, or culture is like a tree without roots. We must know our origins, embrace our history, and if necessary, rediscover our culture. For these strategies will renew and resurrect our original greatness. We can do it, brothers and sisters, if we study and show ourselves approved. Because our ancestors, in this book, they did it back then, and we can still do it right now in 2022. So our God, your God, my God, our God, our Father, please order our thoughts. Order our words, order our steps, so everyone will recognize that their life, I hope you hear it, their life is like a song that they're singing. A song that we sing, even when we're in crisis. A song that nurtures us and educates others while we sing it, reminding us of who we are and to whom we belong. Yes. You and I, the life that we live is a, look at somebody right now, look at somebody and say, yes, baby, I'm singing my song right now. Your life, my life, they are songs that are being sung. That song is a witness. That song is a testimony. That song is for everyone to see and hear, and you may not realize it, but you're preaching your own sermon, even how you live. A song that glorifies the Most High. A song that is faith in action, faith with works, faith advocating for that which is right, justice, equity, and equality. That is a love song. When you witness like that as an ambassador for Christ, you are singing a love song that not only others see, but it glorifies God all at the same time. Your song, your life, is a prayer in motion. So today, this day, let us think of your life and my life as a song and a prayer, very much like this prayer that we know as the Black National Anthem. The two widely known prayers 
that have been often set to music, the Lord's Prayer and the Prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. However, there's another musical prayer that most of us don't realize is a prayer, and that is in our own African-American culture called Live Every Voice and Sing by James Weldon Johnson. The Negro National Anthem. If you study it, the first two stanzas, Johnson addresses his words to the African-American community. But the third stanza, the final stanza, he addresses his words to God. For this reason, the third stanza constitutes a prayer of petition. Listen to the words. Listen. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on our way, thou who has been thy life, led us into the light, keep us forever in the path we pray. Lest our feet strengthen the places our God where we met thee. Lest our hearts drunk with the wine of the world we forget thee. Shadow beneath thy hand, may we forever stand. Listen, true to our God, true to our native land. Like the words of the Lord's Prayer or the prayer of St. Francis, this prayer believe it or not, it is a prayer, is a good model for us today, especially as we face continuous injustices. Let me say right now, rest in peace, Ahmad Bawai, even as your murderers have been convicted again for hate crimes. Even as we face continuous injustices, these challenging times of uncertainty, it is good to have a model prayer to remind us what to do. Now just follow me for a few minutes. The only text for today is Psalm 119, verse 133, part of my step. But the text right now is the third stanza of Lift Every Voice and Sing for Heritage Sunday 2022. Let me give you the setting. This is the background. Follow me. Just walk with me now. First of all, Johnson wrote these words in 1900, 35 years after, after the Civil War. Weariness and unspeakable sadness, like we have today in our world, was the atmosphere in which this prayer, this stanza was written. Filled with over 200 years of forced loneliness. 200 years of separation of families. 200 years of fathers and sons beaten and jailed and lynched. And the declaration of us, our ancestors, being three-fifths of a man. Our ancestors were paid no wages. Sunrise and sunset, free labor. Doing the hardest, the dirtiest, and the most demeaning work known as child slavery. It was a weary time for our African American grandparents and great grandparents when life was no crystal stair. In his prayer, Johnson speaks of silent tears. Do you know how sad indeed you have to be when the hurt in your heart? is so deep, the tears cannot make it to the tear ducts. It is sad indeed when your crying only has a voice, but no tears. The sadness and the pain are still there, but you have no tears left. This constituted the conditions that African Americans, Black Americans, were experiencing when Johnson wrote this prayer. And I hate to say it, due to the pandemic and all of the health disparities and institutional racism that is still in this country and in this world, we have the same conditions today. 
That's the setting in the background. Okay, Reverend Shipman, that's good. Why is this a model prayer? Two things. First, focus, the focus of the writer's petition is upon God. Let me say that again. The focus of the prayer, the focus of the writer's petition is upon God. Under such heavy afflictions and terrible treatment, you would expect the focus of the prayer to be a litany of complaints about misery, suffering, and injustice. But Johnson focused his prayer on the presence of the one who helped Africans in America. It was not how hard life was, but how available God was. Not just how weary the years, but how sustaining the hand of God was. Yes, our ancestors faced intolerable burdens and unspeakable sadness, but they trusted in God. Why? Because they were free of worry and still full of faith. That's a model affirmation that we should even make just a few days from now. Ash Wednesday is just a couple of days away. What a wonderful affirmation to enter the Lenten season with. Mr. Johnson's next words reveal interesting details about God's presence and activity with our ancestors. Listen to the verbs. Are you with me? Listen to the verbs. I'm getting excited myself. Listen to the verbs that he uses. Thou who has brought, thou who has led. He spoke of a God who always directed and guided us. Johnson places the focus not on the presence of our troubles, but on the presence of our God. Not on the presence of unkind slave masters, but on the presence of our strong deliverer. Through the middle passage, thou hast led us. At the auction block, thou hast led us. Through the middle passage, through the Of their oppressors. 
like some of the biblical personalities who were vindictive in their prayers. The writer of the 83rd Psalm prayed such a prayer. He said, let them be put to shame and dismayed forever. Let them perish in disgrace. Dr. Harold Carter, in his book, The Prayer Traditions of Black People, wrote these words. The single most remarkable trait of black prayers was the total absence of the spirit of hate, revenge, and malice, especially to the white power structure. Wow. This is amazing, brothers and sisters. Do you know what is in your DNA that you will have such a resilience? God. It's amazing when you consider that this prayer was written only 35 years after enslaved people gained their freedom, 1865. 43 years after the Dred Scott decision that ruled that U.S. territories could not prohibit a slave, neither free or an enslaved blacks with any constitutional rights. Believe it or not, that's still in effect today. In, the, in 1900, the very year that Johnson wrote this prayer, 105 African Americans were lynched in the United States. But yet, he wrote this prayer as a man of compassion and courage, free of worry, and full of faith. Instead of leaving the black community to concern themselves with what the Lord, what, what he wanted the Lord to do to the oppressors, Johnson's prayer teaches us to concern our prayers with what we desire God to do with us into the beginning 
of the winter season. Then we will be less likely, I'm finished, we'll be less likely to stray from the places our God where we met you. Less likely to stray from the places of prayer and praise. Less likely to stray from the places of humility and favor. Less likely to stray from the places of struggle and deliverance. Less likely to stray from the places of repentance and forgiveness. This model prayer conditions our souls for the Lord to, yes, order our steps in the direction of Calvary. That is where love overcomes hatred. That's where grace retires my worries and where God heals and restores our weary souls. And when necessary, according to Psalm 144, God will also teach us how to use our hands to fight when it's time to fight. Then, when the darts of the enemy seek our destruction, we can forever stand true to our God and what? True to our native land. Out, free of worry and full of faith. Then, my brothers and sisters, when we have trod the stony road for the last time, when we have wept silent tears for the last time, when we have felt the chastening rod for the last time, then we can enter that glorious native land, that new Jerusalem. We'll shut our troubles over. We'll say, God, to be free of worry and full of faith, leading us into a better day. Mm. Well, glory, hallelujah, hallelujah, by and by. Well, now when we reach that city, city way up in the Decision of your life. God bless you, and we'll see you next time.